our worship be a sweet sound in the ear of God. We've come here to worship Him, to praise Him in spirit and in truth this morning. Amen. Amen, beloved. You may be seated. We're going to welcome Brother Brandon Wilson, who's going to do the welcome and the announcements for us. Amen. I think we can do a little bit better than that this morning. Ah, good morning all. Glory be to God. Let's give it up for the praise and worship team this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voices this morning. Hallelujah. You need to lift your voice this morning. Come on, stand up. It's Sunday morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Lift your voice this morning. Something needs to be broken in this place. It's too stale today. Ah. Uh -uh. Hallelujah! Pray with me in the spirit right now. Raise your prayer sword today. Something needs to be go today. Something needs to go. Ramasika na gaboso. Ramasika na gaboso. Ramala gaboboshe. Ima na gabobose. Ronda basa. Lik ramasika na gaboso. Ronda baboboshe. Libra gani gaboso. Hallelujah! This is a place called home where love and unity resides. Hallelujah. Amen. While you remain standing, let's do our vision. Let's do our mission this morning. Amen. We are a kingdom-minded, Christ-centered church preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is a place called home where love and unity resides. Families are restored and communities are served for the purposes of God. This is an equipping and mobilizing center, empowering the individual holistically to live a fruitful and productive life in Christ Jesus. Janine, how do we do it? Glory be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, brothers and sisters of the Family Worship Center. Good morning to those who are viewing us live this morning. We are live from Hurstil in Johannesburg. Thank you to the pastors, the leadership. Be blessed, be greeted all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Our announcements. Next week, Sunday, the 25th of October, we will be having baby dedication. And as per normal, we will meet to worship God at 8.30. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, 9.30. Forgive me. Sorry, Pastor. I'm caught up in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Um, please, can we all just cooperate with the ushers? in compliance with the COVID-19 regulations, just filling in the registry, hand sanitizing, wearing of masks. And we're still working on a plan for our children, Awana, the youth and the Sunday school, and standing together with the leadership in agreement, we trust that all our children are under the mighty hand of God Almighty, and they are blessed and they are protected. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. We are going to partake now of the communion. So those of you who are at home, who are listening with the eyes and ears of faith, I'm going to ask the ushers in the church right now. 
Uh, please distribute the elements among the people, yeah? In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just stand for a moment while they are distributing. Praise God. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes whiter than snow. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Thank you for the blood. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. So thankful for the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. It washes whiter than snow. Glory be to God. This morning, by love, by faith, I want us to recognize the power that has been invested in the body and blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go with me in your Bible to John chapter 6, and I'm reading to you from verse 54. John chapter 6, verse 54. I'm reading to you from the King James Version. The words of Jesus. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Praise God for his word. Hallelujah. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take Eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may partake of the body of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the body of Jesus broken for us. After supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament of my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this do this in remembrance of me. You may partake of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
right now where you are. Let's just pray for a moment. Just pray in the spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, Abba Father, le grabo shende gaboso, rondo si badi gabashi, le graba bababoshi, rando soto shi kende re boso, lo grodo rande basi, le brande regababoshi, lo grodo sati simborodosha, lo grondo ragi boso, imborodo shende le gabababoshi, lo grondo sari de re boso, lo gronda si bondo ragabababoshi, lo ndoro de re boboshi, imborodo sakin la da da boso, lo ndoro do shekende de ge boso, le brande kabasende le gababoshi. Rando so de le de bosho, onda raga baba bosho. Somebody lift a hand this morning. Somebody lift a hand and pray with me in the spirit this morning. Ora basi kenda le baba bosho, raga basi kenda le baba bosho, onda raba shi kenda le bosho, londo radi de bosha, la kaba si kenda le baba bosho, onda raba baba baba bosho, rika basi kenda le baba bosho. I declare this morning over your life. Everything dry, barren, and unfruitful will receive life in your today. In the name of Jesus, embaraga baboso, ronda laga bababoshe, ibanda laga baso. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to prepare our hearts for the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. Stand amazed in your presence. You bring joy, peace, and all. There's no
Our Lord, but your name. Jesus, in your name we pray. Come and fill our hearts today. Lord, give us strength to live for you and glorify your name. Your lift your hands this morning. Let's just thank God for His name. Thank you, Lord, for your name that is great, that is majestic, that is wonderful, that is a strong tower, that in your name great things, marvelous things, mighty things are done, Lord Jesus. There's no other name but the name of the Lord Jesus. No other name higher, no other name wiser, no other name stronger, no other name bolder. And boldly we stand in your name this morning, Lord Jesus. Boldly we stand with confidence that this God is good. He's faithful, he's kind, he's just, and he's sovereign. You rule, you reign, you magnificent, Lord Jesus. Sanda baseke kere sende posokoro boshende. We thank you this morning, Lord Jesus, that your name has given us all things. All things is through that wonderful and mighty name of Jesus this morning. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord, in all the earth who compares to you. Jehovah. Jehovah. Nisi, Abba, Father. Yes, you are. That is who you are. Oh, God reigns supreme this morning. Sanda basiki kini sinde de de sonde. Soko koro sonde bo shotoro bo sanda basakara basinde de de basinde. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, God. Thank you, Lord. Come and lift your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Kir aroso vashte le mo mabra. Come on, stir up the presence in your spirit, man. Stir up the gift of God that is within you. Shir arus baval tornomos cambre parnor que barca tol bros cabar que roco robo cabra. 
Hold the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Rebaba sabar gator bababra kabra remando ryoko bro karika tel barababa. Come on, somebody. Kiri aso ya salabayo kashkoro baram babari rabo ribi kisha robaba kabra kabala babro baba rimba rondo robabo rababa kabra kelama bro baraba bra baraba babro baba rababa kabra katabra kose risata la mako. Parkatar karbo korba karba karba rimba kasa barkator babo sabra. Father, we ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We pray and ask that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. We might know the hope of your calling. What are the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints? The exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the working your mighty power which you worked in Christ when you raised him from the dead set him at your own right hand in the heavenly place as far above all principality power might dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come Lord you put all things under his feet gave him to be head of all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that fills all in all we thank you that we are strengthened with might by your spirit in our inner man Christ dwells in our hearts by faith we are rooted and grounded in your love, Father, we just thank you right now. Holy Spirit, I would welcome in this place. We thank you for your leadership, your guidance. Without you, we can do nothing. We acknowledge our dependence upon thee and yield ourselves to your flow and to your rhythm right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, give him a praise in the house of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, take your seats. Thank God for this opportunity we have to be found in His presence. Amen. Did you have a good week? If you didn't? Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. I would like to thank our pastors, Pastor Audrey, Pastor Libby, all our leadership, Pastor Green, Auntie Liz, for the opportunity to speak God's Word. Amen. How many love the word? You don't, don't you just love God's word? Amen. It's spiritual food for us. I want to talk to you from the law of reciprocity. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, what is that? The law of reciprocity. <laughs> uh, I was giving Byron the title. He said, it's above my pay grade. <laughs> that was funny. But it's just basically speaking about, let me give you a definition of reciprocity. Moving back and forth alternately, giving and taking something mutually, making a return for something given or done, being complementary or at least equivalent. So in other words, things that are the same but functioning in opposites. That's just basically what it means. It's the same, but they are opposed to one another in that the results are different. Are you with me? You need to understand, when you understand the principle of something, nobody can take it away from you. When you know a principle, it's an established law. A principle is an established law. And once you know the principle of something, you are empowered. No one can take it away from you. There are principles that govern driving. When you didn't know it, you thought the ones who, dr who drove were amazing. Huh? How do you do that then? And then you got familiar with the principle. Someone said, no. So the, so the end break off. Start. Sit in first. Starach. <laughs> and when you learn the principles, in the beginning it was difficult because it required all your concentration. But as time went on, it went from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind where habits are established. And from then on, it was automatic. Now you're talking, making noise, playing music, and driving. In the beginning, please, no noise. I'm concentrating. People greeted you, you did this. Is it me? 
Because <laughs> you did not know the principle. But once the principles are known, ah, nobody can take it away from you. They can put you in any car now. You will drive. Do you see? So when we give you biblical principles, when you understand how the world of the spirit works, you can't be defeated. So whatever the devil tries to do, you know exactly what to do in order to get to the place of victory. If you understand how things work, you're empowered. How many want to learn some stuff today? Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you for the five wonderful people. Let's read Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Right? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. A few things I want you to notice. It says, if you are in Christ Jesus, you're not going to be condemned. Right? But it's dependent on the direction of your walk. Are you walking after the flesh? Or are you walking after the spirit? So it seems to me that I am the deciding factor as to what I'm walking after. Do you see? Who walk? There's no condemnation. I will never be condemned. There was no guilt on me because I am in Christ Jesus. But now that I'm in Christ Jesus, I have to choose walking after the flesh or after the spirit. If I walk after the flesh, condemnation is there. But if I walk after the spirit, there is no condemnation because now I am in Christ Jesus. Do you see that? Then the next verse says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That means there was a law that bound me. Called the law of sin and death. I was under a law called the law of sin and death. But then there came another law called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And it broke the power of the law of sin and death. And now I am free to be with no condemnation. Ah. Are you seeing the word? So I'm going to show you how they work. So you have two laws. The law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life. We are born in Adam. And the law of sin and death is operating. There's death all around you. Correct? Even nature cries out for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because the earth finds itself in a condition it was never created for, and that is the condition of sin. The reason you see the groaning of earth is because the escalation of sin. The longer we stay on the planet, the more sin manifests. And the more sin manifests, the more the earth is crying out in pain, saying, I wasn't created for this. And the earth reacts with earthquakes, cyclones, you see? Because it's the earth saying, what have you mankind put me under? So things are out of order. The chaos you see on earth is because of sin. Say, I got it. Do you understand? And so now, God began to, through Christ, give us His law of the spirit of life. So in the law of the spirit of life, I have the ability to overcome the law of sin and death. So whatever happens to everyone in the world is not supposed to happen to me. Because I'm not under that law. But if you don't know what you should do in the law of the spirit of life, that law of sin and death will make you a partaker with everybody else. Hallelujah. God wants you to know His law. Jesus put it like this. He says the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light in their generation. The children of darkness know their system and they work it well. 
Hulle weet hoe om jou te knock. Hulle sal jou successfully knock. Is dit nie waar? Huh? They know that, they are, yo, dat is ander mense, hulle, hulle lieg so goed, hy geloof homself. Hy lieg hoorgraad. This, this is what they know, and Jesus says, guys, come on, look at how they work their system. Their system of finances that's based on if you get, keep. If you want to go up, step on everyone and go up. They know how to do that. It's war out there. You see it in the workplace, backstabbing. Because the higher you go up in the workplace, the more enemies you make. Is it nie waar? Because nou is amal so met teen jou. Hoekom het hy die promotion gekry? Huh? And they start fighting you. They plan your fall. But, if you stay in the law of the spirit of life, no weapon form against you will prosper. Why? Because they may form the weapons. God never promised you there won't be attack. But he did promise you, if you do it his way, that attack won't hold water. He'll grease you up so well that the devil can't get a hold on you. Huh? As you fall grease as he come see. So you are so greased in the anointing that the devil says, this one, I can't get a hold of him. I'm, I'm blowing up a storm here. Why can't I reach this one? Because I'm in the law. I'm in the bubble of God. Form your weapons all you like. I'm in the house that's built upon the rock. If I'm in the house built upon the rock, blow your storm up, do whatever you want to do. It's not going to shake. It will stand. Notice, I'm in my house when the storm is blowing. It's the same storm for the house of sand and for the house on the rock. The same storm. One is falling flat and one is standing. God is no respecter of person. When you do what he says, you are building a rock solid foundation. And when you're in that foundation, you are secured. So the devil can do whatever he wants. You're not going to move. You just laugh at him. Ha! You must do that sometimes. When things go bad, things go, the fridge breaks. I break so much D and I say, ha, 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 devil. The devil is so full of pride, you'll want to know why are you laughing. He'll come like, why are you laughing? Say it, you fool. You know? Live your life as if the devil doesn't exist. A proud person must be ignored. Hulle like dit nie. Iemand wat gesien wil wees, like nie geignore word. The worst thing you can do to somebody who wants to be seen is ignore them. And the devil likes to be seen. I did it. Did you see what happened? I did that. God did it. Notice what he says. Ooh, okay, I'm running ahead of myself, but let, let's back up. Let's go to the book of Job. Job. But before we go to Job, you're on your way to Job. Stop by Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. I want us to look at the life of Job because we're going to look at we're going to look at his story through the eyes of the grace of God. Forget your religious idea of what happened to Job. And let's let the Bible speak for itself. And get the true meaning of what, what goes on behind the scenes. So you can see how the spirit work, world works. Amen? I love this. Are you there in Ecclesiastes 10? It's just after... The book of Proverbs. Verse 8. Mm. Some good stuff here that I want to, but I, let's leave that. He that digs a pit shall fall into it. In other words, you set a trap for someone else. Is it me? He who digs a pit. You put your branches over. 
God says, you will fall in it. In other words, what you sow, you will reap. Isn't it? He that digs a pit will fall into it. Whosoever breaks a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Whosoever breaks the hedge, the serpent will bite him. Whosoever breaks the hedge, what will happen if you break the hedge? The serpent will bite him. Who is the serpent? Who's the serpent? Diablo, the devil. Ne? People are like, they don't know, they're not sure. Who tempted Eve in the garden? Does it? Now let's go to Job and get ourselves a job. Verse chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. This man was perfect and upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. Right? There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone his day, and sent and called to their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, Job sent and sanctified them, rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job do continually. Now, first of all, if you look at verse 1, we find a man, the Bible says, he was a good man. Tell your neighbor he was a good man. And he, he, he shunned evil. Right? This is a good man who's about to go through trouble. Sometimes we think when people go through trouble, it's because they've sinned. As I need a question Lord Jesus, who sinned that this man is born blind? Is it his mother? Is it him? Yeah. Jesus says, it's not, it's none of that. Ignore the reason for his condition. Just be glad the kingdom is here to fix it. That's what Jesus answered. So sometimes, don't look at people and think that what they are going through is because they've sinned. The devil is evil. The criminal doesn't fill in an application form and say, please can I attack and gets permission from whoever to attack you. He's a criminal. Doesn't he? If he's going to rob you, he's going to rob you. But let's, let's look at it. So Job is a good guy. And he's not doing any evil. The Bible tells you that. Sing it. But I want you to see something. So the children get together and uh, they have parties. And this is, this is Job because this is a rich man. Notice, you can be rich and fear God. They've told us in the church, no, holiness and piety is poverty. Doesn't it? And they say things like this, keep the pastor humble, we'll keep him broke. <laughs> this is how they're treating the man of God. Ye carnival eats nice. This is why it's a problem when a preacher prospers. Everybody, the spirit of Judas comes upon people like that. Why is it such waste? Why would you take expensive stuff and waste it on the anointing? Jesus is the anointed one, right? Mary brings something expensive and she pours it on the anointed one. 
So sometimes people will go to an anointed man and bless him. And then the spirit of Judas comes upon those who watch. And then they say something that sounds spiritual. This should have been given to the poor. Why do you waste ministry to the anointing? When you minister to the anointing, they call it waste. Because the devil knows once that anointing comes this way, the yokes are going to be destroyed, the burden is going to be removed. So he will fight it. So when you see a man of God struggling and you say, hey, you shouldn't struggle. Let me help you with this. I'll take this from you. Go and pray and see God. You see, if he has no stress and he can seek God, he will hear from God for you and come with an anointing that will destroy the yokes and the burdens. But the devil says, no, keep him busy. Let him visit and cookies and tea, he's drunk and others. Let him do that so he's no power. This is most what we've done to our leaders. Is it neat? And our children stay on drugs and the community stays the way it is and nothing changes because Jesus, I don't know why I'm there, but let's go. Jesus' anointings, he puts on people. It's his anointing. So he puts a mantle of prophet on this one, mantle of apostle on this one, mantle of pastor on that one. It's his anointing. Right? So, then he calls people into partnership with his anointings. Ah, you don't hear me. So when you sow, you, you get the prophet's reward. So that grace that's on that man, he can ask God for things you can't even ask. He can believe God for things that you can't believe for. But because of your partnership, the anointing on him, he can say, Oh, you've been struggling to have a baby. I'm going to ask God for you. And you can say, I don't believe. He'll say, watch. And you'll have a baby. You see? Huh? Do you remember the prophet? The woman looked after the prophet. She said, come stay here whenever you come through town. She made him a room. Gave him a candle. And, and she ministered to him. So he says to his servant, what does she want? Must I go speak to the king? He goes to her. The woman says, no, I'm, I'm fine, I'm happy, I'm content. I don't need anything. The servant says, she doesn't have a child. He says, oh, okay, I can ask. He goes to, he says, this time next year you'll have a child. She says, I don't believe you. He says, you'll have a child. And she got a child. She had no faith for the child. He had faith. See, in partnership, God blows your faith out of the water and gets you what you need. Ay. All right? Die was for Iman. Because why you... Yeah, that's Judas. That's Judas. And it, people make it sound like it's Jesus who said, who said, this is waste. Jesus rebuked Judas for that attitude. She ministered to Jesus so that Jesus can fulfill his assignment. Because when she anointed Jesus, it was perfume that they embalmed dead bodies with. Because shortly after that, Jesus was going to go be crucified. So she's ministering to the anointed one. And Judah says, it's waste. Give it to the poor. And the people that talk the most never do anything for the poor anyway. Allah suk dai shell for herself, knowing what they would do with it. So when you take something that's of value to you, and you go and you give it to the anointed one, they get upset. They don't they get upset when the rock star has a chain, a aeroplane. They don't get a rock star when they got the best equipment and the best of everything. The minute we go for the best, what's a kerk mensen? Why do they want to just be extravagant? You see? Then they start talking about the poor as if they care. Drive us for yo. So you find Job is a wealthy man, yet his wealth doesn't have him. He worships God and he fears God. Right? But here's the thing I want you to see. Just because you're a good person doesn't mean you're walking by faith. Ah. So watch. 
Job says in verse 5, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Tell your neighbor, curse God. If you have a Bible, underline, curse God. Ooh, the thing of a Bible is a... <laughs> Do you have Bibles, people? This modern generation don't know what the Bible is. This is a Bible, people. This. You know, what is that? You have an app. You can most highlight with your app as well, isn't it? So notice the word. What's on the mind of Job when his children are having parties? What's on his mind is, who deaconess? Well, a party so buyer. What if they curse God? Let me make sacrifices on their behalf because they might be cursing God. Do you see that? I want you to pay attention to that. Let's continue. So now, verse 6, Now when the day, now there was a day when the sons of God, these are the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan came along with them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one who fears God and shuns or eschews evil. Now, what, watch this. The statement here, verse 8, Have you considered my servant Job? Unfortunately, it's a bit misleading. If I go to my margin in the Bible, there's a margin that shows you that verse, how it should originally read. This is what it says in my margin. Have you set your heart on Job? It's not God said. God didn't say, have you considered my servant Job? I'm so proud of this man. No. God says, you have set your mind on Job. Exinio. It's a whole different ballgame from, have you considered my servant Job? Let me pick your attention and put it on Job. No. God's saying, your attention is on Job. Exinio. That's what it says in the margin. Have you, you have set your heart on Job. Because immediately what? You can see Satan has got Job on his mind. Because the conversation progresses. And so God says, you have put your... Then Satan answered the Lord and said, verse 9, Do Job fear you for nothing? Immediately goes into the conversation. Because this is what was on his mind. The one who controls the wealth controls everything. If you control the airwaves, you control what people think. Isn't it? The media that controls the airwaves, they are, they are busy brainwashing us. Is it me? They make you think what they want you to think by repeating information. They just keep repeating stuff over, day in, day out. You don't realize you are being brainwashed. Let me show you an example of what they do. I'll probably have to continue next week because these days my time is so limited, Janine. Janine. I've only buy Pratma Janine. So watch what they do. If I say to you, look, your mind is an amazing tool that God has given you. Your mind can take things backwards and spin it the right way. Let me show you an example. If I come to you and I say, Satan is God. Because of prior, prior training, you say, no, he's not. Isn't it? You immediately kicked out that information because you were trained he's not. If I say to you, Jesus is God, there's an agreement. The green light says, yes, because I've been trained. Are you with me? But if I say, doxinatus, your mind says, huh? 
I said, Lee, that's what happened to you now. I said, don't sign a task. Your mind said, huh? I said, Satan is God backwards. Dog, sai, natas. I said, Satan is God backwards. So your mind, this is what happens to your mind when I say that. The information goes in, it doesn't compute, your mind kicks it out. The information goes in, it doesn't compute, your mind kicks But now I repeat it. Dog sign atas, dog sign atas, dog sign atas, dog And I do it day in, day out. You listening to the music. Dog sign atas, dog sign atas. It's going to the subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind says, where did buy it? Let's file this information. And so now it files it. And now even though consciously you don't believe it, you act like he is God. That's how they brainwashed you. Say, wow. wow. So, they re so watch, she is 12 years old and she says no to the boy. But when she's 19, she says yes. What happened? Consistent brainwashing. Day in. The music, the movies, it's brainwashing you slowly. Your resistance levels are coming down. And you're being reprogrammed and you don't even know it. Because now all of a sudden, it's okay. If you put hot water, boiling water, they did this experiment. Boiling water, they take the frog through him and he jumps out. Because the water is hot. But they leave him in cold water, they say, heat. Slowly. So the longer the water gets hot, warm before hot, he doesn't jump out. Before he knows it, he's dead. Gradually introduced. Look what they are doing now with the, with the, with, with the sitcoms and how they are making homosexuality look normal. It apply only in Vienna. Have you noticed that? When you saw it the first time, you see two men. They're bringing it in sitcoms. Almost every movie now, there's someone who's gay. Pratek Varito. Huh? Why? What are they doing? They're trying to reprogram you so that you can say, "Ah, it's okay. It's their orientation." There's even preachers now agreeing that it's fine. God's not going to change His Bible for any of us. People don't want to be offensive. We want to be politically correct. So, I, I, you know, serve God the way you want. Uh, uh, God says, repent. Don't come in. Are you with me? So this is what's happening. So the devil now is out to attack Job. Because his mind is on Job. Watch. We said in verse 5, Job said, perhaps my children have cursed God. Do you see that? Now go with me. Verse 10. Have you not made a hedge around him? Why was Job protected? Look. Does Job fear you for nothing, God? Have you not made a hedge around him? So what was around Job? A hedge and about his house and about all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth your hand now and touch all he has and he will curse you to your face. Where did we see curse? We saw in verse 8, Job said, perhaps my children cursed God. Where did he get the thought of curse God from? Who sold him the thought, my children maybe have cursed God? Yeah, he's talking to God and Satan said, if you God, take the hedge away, he will curse you to your face. Let me help you. You have never had an original thought in your whole life. Every thought you have is not yours. <laughs> you kicked me. 
that is a unique person. Hey, you have never had an original thought in your whole life. You found the thoughts here. Is it not? The baby was born and he saw you. He you praat elke dag. Mama, Papa, Gluk, Gluk, or whatever. Ne? I worry you proud. And he takes your thoughts and starts forming his language. Who come clunk is with ye? You don't find you don't find a Zulu family speaking Zulu and the country Afrikaans. Imagine he come and who's it? Ma who's it? Pa? Ma? Ma pa who's it? Huh? When's I? <laughs> it doesn't work. He gets his thoughts from his parents. And it forms his whole thinking and everything. And he talks and sounds like you because he gets your accent and so forth. The world is governed by thoughts. Thoughts expressed in words. So you either take them or you reject them. We see from Job's actions, he took thoughts that came from Satan. Curse God and die. Satan can't just do to you what he wants to. He must find the handle. Ooh. And he's, if he finds the handle, that's when he has access. So curse God is on Job's mind. So you can see because now Satan is talking to God and said, if you take your hand away, he'll curse you to your face. I'm giving you truth here. Amen. And the Lord said unto Satan, verse 12, Behold, all he has is in your power. Only upon himself put not forth your hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. Now, again, you need to understand the context. God says, behold. What does the word behold mean? I didn't answer yet. You. No, they don't know what behold means. The word behold. In other words, whosoever breaks the hedge, the serpent will bite him. So, Job's actions was not based in faith. It was reacting to a thought from Satan. So, he's not in faith anymore. He's in fear. Perhaps my children curse God. Notice, that doesn't sound like someone that's in faith. Okay, chapter 3. And I'm about to close. Eh. Chapter 3, verse 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Sing it. I, man, circle, man, brother Brendan. The thing that I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety. Why are you not in safety? You felt unprotected. Right? Neither was I quiet. I had no rest. His peace was disturbed. When you are afraid, you have no peace. When you are in fear, you don't rest. That's what I'm saying. You worry. Is worry not a manifestation of the fear that's in your heart? Get the rent, You are not at rest. You are not at peace. You are in fear. So Job is in fear trying to make these sacrifices. And if you break the hedge, the serpent will bite you. So in fear, because remember, faith put up the hedge. But now Satan didn't know. You see, Satan is not all-knowing. Satan did not know his plan was working on Job. God had to point it out to him that the plan has worked. Because God's not going to lie. Because when he says, Take your hand away and he'll curse you to your face. God says, no, look, behold, 
He is in your power. Not, I am giving him to you. He already is in your power. This is meat. It's not Mickey Mouse food. God will never say to the devil, I heard a preacher say that. Because you don't understand biblical principles. What father will tell an enemy, Not so. They will lock you up for child abuse. But yet preachers get in the pulpit and accuse God and saying, God allowed the attack. You allowed the attack in fear. And beside that, Satan will attack anyway. You need to be prepared for any attack. God will fight for you while you're under attack. This is the way the world of this. I remember years ago, I need to close. It was my time of. So, what happened was, I was in Standard 5, grade 7. And, uh, well, it was Standard 4. There was this saved guy in class. <laughs> he used to bribe the teacher. <laughs> Every day after, after, after poser, he comes in with sweets. And he puts it on a desk and he go and he said, it actually worked for him and he passed. Because <laughs> he was not very smart. He's one of those, I don't know. He was a believer, but he was struggling. But it worked in his favor. The teacher, maybe God let him prime money for I don't know. <laughs> no, God didn't do that. So anyway, I don't know, we had a fight or something. Something happened and we had a fight. I think we were playing soccer or something and we had a fight. And he was mad at me. He said, there's, <laughs> there's going to be carters waiting for you outside the school. He's talking about angels now. The angels are going to now whoop me. It put me in such fear. Hey, check it. But he couldn't find the Yerach of Mars. He said, check it. I have messed with God. <laughs> and so, the whole time I'm expecting bad things to come. But nothing came. Because God's not going to now just. Then, then watch God. I wasn't even saved, but watch God. I was in standard five now. It's a year later. I get injured. My foot had an accident. I'm in hospital. And the devil said, pay back. But God, I'm not even saved. God says, and I look back and I used to say, I like to fool who's at my hospital to I said it a lot. And immediately God showed me in my unsaved state, you are here because of your mouth. Exa like om the fool. Who is it om in your hospital to be? What the dumb? Where did I get that idea from? Diablo. You see what I'm saying? Said it and said it and said it and said it and boom, manifestation. And it's amazing the day I got injured, that's what popped into my mind. Because of your mouth. You talked about the hospital. Because the very next day I got saved. See, God is smart, man. That even in a sinful state, He can talk to you. And teach you stuff. Then I realized it, God wasn't punishing me. My want. The thing that I greatly wanted has come upon me. That was the dumbest request ever because hospital is not nice. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? If you look at your life, check your mouth. Ah, uh, all right. We'll unhook. And continue next week because our time is up. Did you learn something today? Yes. Amen. Let's stand. Father, as we follow the Holy Spirit in this teaching, may you lead us to understand how the world of the Spirit works so that we may be able to intelligently engage that realm 
and rather see kingdom manifestation as opposed to satanic manifestation. I pray today every negative, destructive, corrupt, critical, harsh, and unkind word that we have spoken, we call upon the power of the blood of Jesus to, to erase the fruit that's about to come off of that. You need to now look at your life. Maybe you've been saying things you're not supposed to say. There's power in the blood of Jesus to uproot that seed that you've planted. You need to change the way you talk about your child. Change the way you talk about that situation. Change the way you talk about your boss. Change the way you talk. If you keep speaking the negative, you're going to keep having it. You need to change what you say. And so you start by repenting for all the negative you've spoken. Ask God to forgive you and let the blood of Christ kill that harvest. Kill those seeds. Kill those sprouts. In the name of Jesus, repent of negativity and start planting seeds of faith. In the name of Jesus, Father. Thank you. We partake of communion and we thank you that the blood not only washes our sins away, but it destroys every negative seed that we have sown. From today, we'll just speak faith only, Lord. Hallelujah. And see the results that come from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. In this anointing, let's bring our seed and our tithes and our offerings. Understand why the devil has been fighting you from giving. is because if you minister to the anointing, you are partaking of grace. And he doesn't want you to be free in your finance. Poverty is broken over the offering plate. So come, let's just give. Father, thank you as we sow today. We minister to the anointed Jesus, apostle and high priest of our confession. I pray for every seed that your people will plant in the kingdom, that the anointing of this house will be made available to every single one that will propel them to the next level in their life, next level of income, next level of breakthrough, we declare debt cancellation. We declare increase. We declare promotions. We declare employment that comes to all your people in the name of Jesus. We erase unemployment from this church house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That none of our members will be unemployed because you are our provider. You're our source. So we pray provision will come for your people as we sow by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bring your seed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you.